What is up, everybody? It's Dr. Vibe here, host and producer of the award-winning Dr. Vibe show. As always, I like to say you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles and a solution for someone's problem. Also note that I am the host of Epic Conversations and the Dr. Vibe show is the place for Epic Conversations. Know also I'm a certified empowerment coach. And remember, you're blessed, highly favored, a magnet for miracles, and a solution for someone's problem. Well, I am jacked because this young lady has finally had the moment to come (laughs) back to the Dr. Vibe Show platform to have always epic conversations. Uh, What can I say? I, I said to her before we went on live that there was a time I thought she would ask me how many shows I do, and now it's how many shows does she do? Because there's so much stuff going on. I have Chitachi Egu, and just call her Tachi. That's the way she loves to be called. She's a Nigerian American professor, writer, producer, filmmaker, dance choreographer, artist, and actor. Six job man from the old (laughs) Headleys from (laughs) Dewey and Living Color. She earned a BA in communication from the University of Buffalo in 1996 and moved to Howard University in Washington, D.C., where she completed a master's and Ph.D. in mass communication. I mean, I could go through all this stuff, but I want to make sure we get all we can in the time we have with Tachi. So, yeah. Tachi, welcome again. Thank you so much for taking time in your positive, productive schedule. How you doing? I'm good, Dr. Vibe. How are you? Never mind me. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing fine, blessed, and highly favored. A magnet for miracles, solution for someone's problem. And before we go any further, can you tell everybody what shows you're involved with before we get any go any further? So tell us all the shows that you're doing these days. Okay. So, of course, where it all started was with Mediascope. I do that every Wednesday on Periscope, Busker, and Facebook Live. Busker is first at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, then 6 p.m. Eastern Time is uh, Periscope and Facebook Live simultaneously. Fridays, I do the social media. See, oh, and that's all about media tech and pop culture, the latest in that. Fridays, I do the latest in social media on the social media scene with my friend Alice Fuller. We do that on Facebook Live at 12 noon Eastern time. Sundays, I do the classic movie salon with three other fantastic people in New York, LA, and London. And we talk all about classic films. We pick a film and then we watch it and discuss. And it's like a book club for film. You know, if you don't have time to read, you can watch a classic film. And then I also have a podcast with my good friend, Kevin Williams, who's also out in L.A. It's called TV Channeling. And that is basically it's a review show. So we review television shows. We talk about entertainment film and television news. And we just have a bloody good time, basically. (laughs) Absolutely. So you see why we we have to squeeze her in because it's not because I'm that positive productive. It's because she's positive productive she's got a lot going on and we were going back and forth we booked this conversation a while back and yesterday we we're going back and forth on twitter saying what are we going to talk about what are we going to talk <laughs> about so before i go any further big shout out to candy from japan thanks for stopping by much appreciated not taken for granted you, candy. candy so uh, myself and tachi we are very big um i don't like to use the word fans maybe admirers, supporters of a gentleman we're going to hail out right on the front end here, Mario Armstrong. So she said, and make sure I'm going to say it now, I'm going to say it at the end, make sure you check out his hot social live stream show that's on every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Please support it all you can. He has had over 100, almost 100,000 views of the first show and over 4,000 comments on Facebook Live. You can watch it on the Never Settle Show Facebook page and you can also watch on the Entrepreneur Facebook page also. Waving back, yeah. waving back, Andy, waving back. So we said let's talk <laughs> about let's talk about live stream and the state of live stream. And I was thinking this afternoon, myself and Tachi, we met through live stream. I, and the funny thing is, I was just talking about this today with someone when they asked, I was saying I was going to be on the Dr. Vibe show, and they said, well, how did you meet? I was like, oh, we met through Blab, and yeah. I went into the whole thing. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's funny to see in a short period of time, the evolution, the the, the weaves, the bounces, the all around, and it's funny because today on my Twitter timeline, I actually saw a tweet by the VP of 
the company that started Blab. I said, wow, I hadn't heard from him in a long time. So it was wow. it was very interesting. So let's, I guess, let's take a trip back in time to okay. the Blab days, to the Meerkat days. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> like, what now I, I couldn't figure this out correctly. Was Meerkat before Blab? I believe it was, yes. right? Yes. So Meerkat go was ahead. the first of the live streaming app, commercial live streaming apps. I'm not counting uh, YouTube, Google Hangout, not counting live stream or any of those. Those were not mass medium media if, if that they are but they were not uh, adopted by the mass by the populace so i really start this type of live streaming with meerkat and great idea but couldn't make money um i tend to blame <laughs> oh, okay go ahead for this i i and here's the thing Everybody wants to get into the app game. Whenever there's a great idea, there are 10, uh, 10 million other people behind you waiting to replicate that idea. And in some cases like Facebook, <laughs> they won't even change the idea very much. They just do it. So there's always somebody waiting to replicate if you don't take the time to innovate and somebody with more money who could probably give it longevity. Uh, part of the problem with some of these apps is that not only did they not, the big thing is they did not have a plan. They could tell me all day they had a plan, but if they really had a five-year plan, they would be on phase two of whatever it is that they did right now and not shutting down shop after barely a year. It doesn't make any sense. And that to me says not only lack of planning, but a lack of a sound financial plan for fundraising for monetization, it, that's what that signals to me. Now, I know it's very difficult to run these things. The problem is everybody gets into the game with the, it's a cool tool and then it's like, oh, well, maybe we can be acquired. And what happens is you get this slew of apps that are for whether they're for sound or audio, whether they're for live streaming, and the hope is to get acquired. Now, that's not everybody's hope, but you see this over and over. And so if your only claim to fame is the fact that oh, we're trying to sell, you don't pay attention to what you have, and you definitely don't pay attention to the creators and what the creators are telling you. So it, it, it becomes a lose-lose. So I blame <laughs> Meerkat. I blame Blab. I blame all of them. They ran out of money. Okay, well, and, let, and let's, and, uh, you know, we spoke a little bit about Meerkat. Now, the thing that Blab did great, and maybe uh -huh. because of the time it landed, was the sense of community. Because I still, and f still to this day, out of all these live stream platforms, I, th I think, personal opinion, Dr. Vibe's opinion, that Blab okay. created the sense of community better than any of them. May, and and the thing is, and people may say Periscope, maybe Periscope. I don't think Facebook Live has that same community feel as Blab did. No. Your thoughts? No. Yeah. So I, I I believe I think you're absolutely right. I think Blab did an exceptional job of it. I no, I'm not even going to give it to Blab. Blab created the platform. We've created the community. Good point. That was us. Uh, also, I, for me though. I we I'm always with a group of people. We call ourselves the Meerkat class of 2015 because <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch of us that really took to Meerkat. It was, you know, the first platform got on uh, maybe the day it launched or very soon after. And, you know, if you weren't streaming, you may have been watching and making comments. There are those of us. There was uh, one woman in particular, uh, Lydia who we all love. She streamed yes. every day. Remember Lydia? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. So she streamed every day, different topics every day. And it really, when she said she was going to stop streaming because she had to pursue some other things, we really felt a loss. So there, nobody can tell me there's not a real sense of community. And I'm sure you know now there's this, uh, there's this whole thing of everybody still really trying to find a home after having a, a home on like Blab for such a long time or, you know, someplace else for such a long time. And then it goes away. There's this whole process of trying to find 
where you fit in and having, you know, the audience follow you. But at the end of the day, that's the thing. The audience will follow you. It has nothing to do with the platform. The platform is how we got together. We're who creates the community because it's about the people, not the platform. Well put. I think for the last little while, there has been stability in the landscape. We haven't seen anyone drop off. The last major one that dropped off was Huzza, which got bought by Kickstarter. They got acquired, correct. And 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 I just uh, an FYI out, out there, when you see platforms not answering their customer service inquiries or the technical end isn't addressed in a period of time, red flag. <laughs> They're about to go. That is the telltale sign. And the thing is, we've seen it with each of these platforms that that have gone away with not, you know, all of the platforms that have gone away. First, what happens is it starts getting technically glitchy. Then they stop paying attention to you. And then magically delicious like Lucky Charms, they disappear. <laughs> <laughs> and Candy shouted out that, yeah, Lydia Madison is the uh, is a rock star of Meerkat. She was a rock yes. star. I mean, that's how I know Candy, actually, okay. Okay. from uh, from Lydia's show, definitely. And then you, you start to see people in these various shows that you all love, and you see, oh, hey, they're doing streams. I got to support them because I know them from Lydia's show. So so the, so the we've got, we've left Meerkat, left Blab, and now there's a plethora of platforms out there. And one thing I have to compliment and, and do, and I always pump, Tachi's conversation that she has. She has raised her game on her live streaming. So you need to check her her show out, her conversations out on Thursday. She over the last month she's really raised the game. So uh she's uh the tip of the spear in a lot of ways on what she's doing uh, with all her platforms. So what when you first got into let's take it back when you first got into doing media scope. Uh -huh. What what reason did you want to go there and what re were you into live you were into live streaming before why did you choose periscope to go at, to get mediascope off the ground so i actually did meerkat and periscope simultaneously from the very beginning i had used in fact i i've been kind of doing live streaming for a while i incorporated that into my classes so i had my students at the university use google hangout and I was like, all right, well, you guys have to conduct a hangout and find uh, a media person, a notable media person to interview. So I'd always used it not only as something I did myself and, you know, kind of worked with other people on, uh, but also as a cheap teaching tool, as an education tool. So I'd kind of always done that. And then they made it easy because they made it for mobile, <laughs> even though there was there was the hangout for mobile, but I never used it. This was one button. It wasn't all this rigmarole you had to go through with Google Hangout. Bam, here you are. And so it, Meerkat and Periscope, I didn't start like in March, like some other people who got on the platforms in March when they started. I didn't start broadcasting till July because my thing was I wanted to watch and see who was in the space, what they were broadcasting about, and where I fit in. So I wanted to fill that gap of information that was not being talked about. That's where my niche was, I decided. And so I watched, and there was some wonderful stuff that was rubbish, but there was also wonderful things as well. And I said, well, I don't know what I want to do. But then it hit me. I'm like, wait a minute. You teach media. You teach all the what, what, Why not talk about that? So I decided just one day, I'm like, Whatever, today's going to be my first day doing it. I set up both of my devices, did Periscope on one side, Google Hang, uh, sorry, uh, Meerkat on the other, and that's how it started. So this was in July of 2015. You've mentioned a few times Google Hangouts, and it's, it's going back, they they missed out and obviously it's transferred to YouTube Live, but Google Hangouts had a window of opportunity to get it right now i don't know if you find youtube live a better alternative than google hangouts it seems to be a little bit more user friendly but there's more work when you want to use youtube live at times depending on what platform you're using it from 
In my opinion, it's the same rigmarole, if you ask me. <laughs> it's just the same old nonsense uh, with, with maybe a little more ease. Here's my problem with YouTube, again, and Google. They did miss out on a tremendous opportunity. To, you were already doing this before any of these people had the thought in their heads or were born, probably. Some of these people were in middle school when you were doing all of this. You had a tremendous opportunity to be the first to go live. All you had to do was condense what you were doing for mobile and make it easy. You had the opportunity, but they missed it. Now, again, I kind of understand because they're jack of all trades. Their main thing was not the live. Their main thing was the uh, the video, not the the not live video, the unlive video, and cultivating creators from that sense and building. So I get it. That's not necessarily your thing, but you had been doing live. It just would have taken a few extra steps to do that. So I here's the other problem with that. Building an audience and a following on YouTube slash Google right now is exceedingly difficult because the space is saturated. There are so many people that are using it, which is great, but for somebody that's trying to get noticed, let, let's take, for example, uh, a lot of these vloggers. You've got beauty vloggers, you've got natural hair vloggers. The moment one person does it, everybody's like, oh, well, I have natural hair, I could do this. I talk about beauty, I could do this. So if you type in beauty, you will get no less than thousands of videos talking about that. How do you stand out in the crowd? you know, from that. It takes a lot of work off of YouTube to be able to do that now. It's not those people that came in at the ground floor. They basically, it's it's just a case of keeping your audience. For the rest of us, it's building that audience and it's really difficult. So I think that's kind of YouTube's problem, bringing new people and new creators, because how long will you stick around if you don't have people listening to you? And I think just picking up on that, didn't YouTube now recently say that in order to get paid by YouTube, you have to have a certain audience now? Do you, could you share a bit on that? Yeah. So you have to have, there's two, a couple of things they did to me, which were hand in hand. So you have to have at least 10,000, I don't remember if it's views or followers. It's two different things. My inclination is followers. 10,000 followers to be able to monetize that. I, I can see why it has to be worth it for the, uh, for the companies, for the uh, brands to want to advertise. And if I'm only getting a thousand eyeballs, that may not be worth it for me. So that's something recently, actually just last week that came down. They also though now have lowered. So YouTube does have a streaming app uh, and they've lowered the number that you need to have in order to use it. So it's 1,000 to 9,999 instead of the 10,000 you had to have before. So these are the two things that they've done recently, which to me go hand in hand. So that, that's another thing. You, you bring up an excellent point. Your goal may be to put great information out there and to make some money off of it, eventually monetize it. And if you can't do it because you don't have 10,000 uh, followers and not only do you not have 10,000 followers, it's, it's a slim chance of you getting that in the landscape that happens now. It, it, it may not be attractive to you, but you, uh, YouTube slash Google may not care if they have enough creators that are bringing them money, that are bringing in the ad dollars to the, I don't think they're in the cultivation game really anymore. Okay. What I'd like to do, if you're comfortable, is I'd like you to get your take on some of the different platforms because you just shared about YouTube. What are your pros and cons about Periscope? Periscope, the, the quality is not always that great. That's that's one thing that I noticed. The, the image quality is not su you know superb. So if you wanted to do something like do uh, live stream it and then project it, the moment you blow it up, it's not going to look very good. So that was the that was one thing. Meerkat to me had excellent image quality. I always preferred the image quality of Meerkat over Periscope. Um, you would think it would be getting better and better being that they're trying to make sure they maintain market share, but it, it's not. So problematic is the image quality. Also, there, it tends to be 
glitchy sometimes. Yes. I, yes. Yes. Now you, you, glitchy, you're, you're, pro, you're the, one of the people that would know that better than anyone else I know. Exactly, because you see it always kicks me off at 7.59 or 6.59, exactly. I'm like, really? Really? Now, since I have a producer, I don't have that problem anymore because the feed is not coming from me. It's going for, so whatever, They've we've been able to fool them for now. <laughs> but yeah, the glitches, the glitches are a lot. And then, of course, but this is in any, with any social platform, there are going to be trolls. There tend to be an exorbitant number of bots and trolls. I don't really have that problem anymore. I guess, you know, they come in and it's like, okay, boring, bye. Fine, fine with me. <laughs> I don't care if you don't like this news. But uh, for some other people, the uh, bots and the trolling tend to be a bit much. Yeah, and and again, comparing that to YouTube, you don't get that when you do a YouTube live. That's that's just not in the picture. But the troll thing, look how long that's been an issue. And Twitter hasn't done anything with it. And I even question about the audience counts, live audience counts. I think there's a whole lot of things that just go mm, on Periscope. You know, well, here's the thing. Of course, Twitter is the parent company of Periscope. And we see what Twitter has done in terms of trolling. They're just now, after how many years, starting to try and crack down and control things like fake news, crack down and control things like the, so you know they, they changed the, uh, the avatar on Twitter from the egg, if you don't have an avatar uploaded, it was an egg, but now it's a uh, floating head person. Like, because I guess you can no longer troll once you uh, change the avatar. So to me, that's energy placed in the wrong damn place. To me, that's just me. So, uh, you know, it's taken them a long time. They're slow to the game on everything, particularly when it comes to trolling. I'm not surprised when it comes to Periscope because they're just trying to get Twitter under control now. Periscope is a whole other animal. Just want to shout out to T Tish Rosales. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. Think and keeping her promise. She said she was going to drop in, so she did. So I received that. What do you, what do you feel is the long-term vision for Periscope? Do you think that basically what will happen is we'll just do videos from Twitter because I don't understand why they're, they're two different platforms. So this is what I, I don't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. But when I saw that Kayvon, who is, you know, one of the founders of Periscope became, has now been absorbed into Twitter. So his, uh, his, he actually is with Twitter now as opposed to being just with Periscope. That to me said something about either Periscope being fully absorbed by Twitter or morphing into something else per Twitter. Uh, they, they're going to do something. They've got to do something. And now they have more time on their hands since they lost the NFL Thursday night NFL contract. Now they have more time to, to do things. So I suspect... I, I suspect that there is something coming down the pipeline in terms of either absorbing Periscope or uh, morphing it from what it is to something else. Uh, so, I didn't know. So who did they lose the contract to? Amazon. Oh. Amazon paid $50 million Whoa. for the right to stream NFL Thursday night football. <laughs> Just out of curiosity, yeah. is Amazon in the live stream game? Oh, oh well, not, you know what? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Never say never. Never say never. Because we never thought that they would be a production studio either. We always thought Amazon was going to be about books, getting your college books for cheap. Right. <laughs> and then they gave this shipping thing. Who, know, and who knew Amazon Prime was also going to get not into only streaming of movies, but now we are creating original series that have beat some of the majors at these award shows? So never say never with Amazon. I think it would be a good avenue for them to get into live streaming because they're doing it with the football. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? So, 
I, I suspect that Jeff Bezos and Amazon are trying to get their feet wet in this whole streaming game and trying to see what they can do, where it will lead, and how. if anybody is able to monetize this with certainty, it will be Amazon. Amazon. Yes, true. And actually, I, I can follow up on that because uh, there's a gentleman who I've had on the platform a few times who actually is working for Amazon out in Seattle. And I oh can, yes, he's a he's a he's a, he has thirty years of experience in IT, and he's uh, been working for the last two years with uh, Amazon. So I will ask him about that. I just had him for the first time about four or five years on the show, and uh, I will certainly follow up with him on that. Uh, Candy says that Amazon is preparing, so maybe Candy, you know something that we don't know. Mm. Yeah, yes, Candy, do tell if you do. Tell it to Tachi it's first. Tough. Tell it to Tachi first. Don't tell me. <laughs> so, <laughs> you so, can tell Dr. Vibe too. It's all family yeah, here. You better believe it. You better believe it. Now, let's take a look at Facebook Live. What are your thoughts? So here's the thing. And you you uh you brought this this interesting point up in terms of community and where you felt, you know there was community. Facebook Live is several different communities. Whereas where you look at Periscope and back of the day, Meerkat and Blab, and then uh, some of these other, there are, Facebook is several different communities because it is based off of the network that you already have. So if you're live streaming from, for example, your personal page, these are people that you've built relationships with. They're either friends and family, people that you know uh, through industry or work, those types of things. So you're building this community that's your own. And there are now nearly 2 billion people on Facebook. They're at, I think they're at 1.9 now. So there, there are nearly 2 billion people. That's 2 billion different communities. Some of them cross over. But that's two two different two billion people is basically two billion different communities. So you're you, it's very different from other forms of live streaming. If you, if you ask me, that said, they have the propensity to do something big. Not only because they have the money, if they do things right, if they can stop doing stupid things and they do things right, they have the propensity to really overtake Periscope and overtake some of these other live streaming uh, platforms. If they could do it, here's here's what's going to be the problem: the authenticate the authentication process. You have to sign in to use that to see and use these things, right? You have to sign in basically with with a Periscope or whatever as well. But you don't necessarily have to be signed in to watch. You do for Facebook. Yeah, and that's a problem. Yep, that's a problem. So until they're able to do something about that. You are cutting down on who can watch. It's it's really only that community of 1.9 million people that are really going to be able to do anything about that. So that's one thing. The other thing is I think they are now developing an app for uh, app. Uh, what is it? The Apple TV. Okay. okay. So they're developing an app, working on an app for Apple TV. I suspect it will also be for like Roku, Chrome, et cetera, where you're going to be able to watch other people's videos. That is another way to expand. But until you get rid, I shouldn't say get rid, but make the authentication process easier for people who don't have Facebook, that's always going to be problematic. And I just want to correct you. You were saying 1.9 million. I think it's more like 1.9 billion no, I said billion with a B. Oh, sorry, Mike. No, I thought I heard you wrong. No problem. the the thing yeah. The thing about Facebook Live that's interesting is there's a lot of pluses with it, but the delay time for people to get notified when you're doing Facebook Live can be a can be a challenge. Oh yes, you see all the we're gathering an audience for you. We're doing this and this. People, because, okay, search and discovery is terrible on Facebook yes, right now. Yes. So you cannot look for what you want to look for, okay? You can try, and there is the live map that you can go to and, and figure out some things. But if I'm not mistaken, I don't think live map picks up everybody who's live at any given time. So the search and discovery, let's just say it's terrible. So it's terrible if you're not 
getting notifications from a person you're following, you may miss their live streams. I can't tell you how many times that's have like, damn, why did I miss? Yes. Because I don't have notifications turned on for them. So you have to do that for every single person. That's just not feasible. You need better search and discovery so we can discover on our own without having to subscribe to somebody unless we want to when someone is live. And it's interesting. One of the things I hope or hopefully Facebook will do down the line is allow the multicam. Now, right now, and I mean dual camera, they've just they've released it now, but it's only available for iOS devices. It's, it's just iOS. Believe me, I've tried. Yeah. It's okay. just iOS. <laughs> and and, the, <laughs> and now this brings into the, the conversation piece, Be Live TV. Yes. So if you want to just share with our audience about Be Live TV, I use it a lot. I've, uh, But I since you're the expert, the S, subject matter, S, the SME, share with us about Be Live TV. Says you. Oh, but before we go on to Be Live, I just wanted to mention, I don't know if you know, remember when uh, we had talked about it, they had talked about the fact that uh, live audio yes. is uh, was available for. So now it's available for everyone, it seems. Wow. I just did a live audio today. On for Facebook? You go to Facebook Live. Yeah. And instead of, you'll have two icons now. Oh, you'll have the camera wow. if you want to go live video and the microphone to just do audio. Wow. So now this is this is something big for podcasters because you can do it's like live radio basically. Yep. So you can live audio I, I, stream from your Facebook page. Yep, you can live audio stream from your Facebook page now. Just discovered it today. Quietly came in. I had no clue. I knew it was up in like BBC and a couple of others were using it and it's funny because I had uh tweeted Facebook and said, "Hey, I do a podcast." We'd love to beta test it. Ah, and you did you did that with another, you did that request for another platform that we'll chat about in a little while too about tr beta testing one of their their features. But you may not remember. Yeah. Yes, we'll get, we'll get I to do. that. But that's interesting. So, and that's another form of live streaming. So, is Facebook trying to be everything? Yes. <laughs> No need to lie. They're trying to be that, but you have to be careful of that old adage, jack of all trades, master of none. I think that part of the, they want to be everything and they are not, they're very, they're shameless in taking features. For example, Snapchat, if you look at Facebook stories, really Facebook, you didn't even bother to call it something different. Same thing they did with Instagram. So they see a feature, they see something that works. If they can't acquire the company, they'll replicate whatever it is and try and overtake that other entity. They are trying to be everything. The question is, can they do everything well? Do they have the capacity? And I keep telling people, stay tuned for Facebook studios because it's happening. It's going to happen. What What is um, that? What's Facebook studio? Studios. Studios, sorry. Studios, sorry. Right, producing live content and actually building a network. I can see that happening. Wow. Now, would they be able to do that well? That's the question. You have the money. You have you have the resources. You probably can get the people. Can you do it well? Do you know enough about this is the same company, by the way, that just a few months ago were saying, well, no, we're not a media company. We're a tech company. They didn't even understand the <laughs> fact that while you use technology to bring forth what you do, that's all media. Anybody that studied any communication 101 would know that. So the fact that you, uh, Sheryl Sandberg, said that, and then they backtracked and said, oh, well, 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 we're a media company, just a different type of media company. Yeah, like everybody else who's a media company, everybody thinks they're different. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. It is. I bet you it's coming soon. They are trying to take over everything to answer your question, yes. Well, you know, and, and I just went on my tablet to see if I could use the the audio feature, but it right now I still just have access to live video. So I guess they're rolling it out to selected people over time. Well, here's the thing. Are you looking at your page? I did not look, I did not do it from my personal page. I did it from a fan page. I did so, it. From, I'm doing it from a fan page. Really? And you don't have that. Don't have it. Just says right now, go live. And it just, it just indicates live video. It does not indicate anything about, live live audio but that 
That's interesting. Uh, interesting. You know. Okay, today. so they could be rolling it out slowly. I don't know what the rigmarole is or the uh, the rhyme or reason why I would have it and you wouldn't. They're, I guess they're, just, okay. they're going in alphabetical order. No. Well, so you know what? It, you know, and it, I'll just bring it up. Like be live. Just the other day sent me an email saying, oh, we want you to be a beta tester for, they have this Be Live show where you can have oh. yourself and two other people on at the same time. And then you can put 10 people in the like, audience. And whenever you want the audience to come in live, it's basically a drag and drop. Interesting, interesting. And you were, you were getting ready to, before I went on to talk about Be Live. Yeah, so that yeah, so I I was I haven't tried it yet, but I saw that and I go interesting and it just makes me think, how is Be Live making money when they're using Facebook's platform? I I can't even say what their strategy yeah. is or, or 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 what their future strategy is going to be. If they're not careful, they could easily be swallowed up. Well, that's, I, this, is, this is the thing, because I'm looking at it going, okay, they have this technology where they're using Facebook's platform where you can have multi-camera conversations, like with right. up to two other people with one-on-one, one on one, and then they also have a feature they sent me where you can have like a full-blown, I don't have enough time, and I'm not that adept at, pardon me, at doing that, but my question is, how are you making money? And the thing is, will Facebook come and just swallow them up and say, oh, well, we've you've got the technology. We don't have it yet. We're just going to buy you out and bang. And they would probably be like, thank you very much and flip their money, counting it as they're uh, watching. Absolutely. Probably. Probably. If you here's the thing, if you don't have the capital to stay afloat yourself, you start looking for someone else that does that could, you know, buy you out basically okay well i'm just going to catch up with some conversations here in the chat room uh tish is saying yes i watch a lot of fabulous people on be live tv then she says dr vibe and she puts must in capital letters have tachi back one hour is not enough time for this powerhouse oh tish you are too kind Absolutely. but you know I'll put you out there, Dr. Vibe, because we had said a long time ago that once a month I was going to come out yeah, on and do the media thing. I'm still committed to that. Good. Well, that's what you're, you're like I said, when I wait, you just keep on doing more shows. So no worry about that. No, no, don't look. Never mind. What I do is don't never mind about that. I always have time for Dr. Vibe. Seriously. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I want to bring into the, the conversation Anchor. Because I don't think a lot of people know about Anchor, but you, out of everyone I know in my circle, use Anchor more than anybody else. So I want you to give an education about Anchor, and then also, how do you use it? Because you are a frequent flyer, so to speak, on Anchor. I Look, when I find an app that I like, I am loyal to the wheels fall off, seriously. So Anchor is a... a I call it a micro podcasting app. It is a an app where you can uh, record audio. Okay, let's talk about Anchor. There were two. There are two uh, generations of Anchor. The first generation of Anchor, everybody got on, and what what happens is you you can record audio. You had initially up to two minutes of audio, and then people could reply back to you with an audio response, and so you would end up with these threads of conversations about various topics. And there were people that you would follow, and people that had great. There are people that create great content on Anchor. So that's basically, it's micro podcasting. And there are a lot of people use it as a podcasting, a micro podcasting platform for shorter bursts of audio. For example, uh, the University of Southern California Annenberg School, they do the, they have the students actually create their daily news things on Anchor. Oh. And uh, yeah. So now what they what's actually happened is we're now on Anchor 2.0 okay. and it's you can see that they're trying to go in a different direction. Here we go again with the 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 company that is now, you know, creators are there. They're all excited. And you've built an experience where we go back and forth and we've built community. And now you've decided that you want to favor kind of uh, certain 
well, broadcasters in general, and make it into a radio app. So it now more closely resembles radio. So we all have stations now. You have a station. Your your um, content disappears after 24 hours, but you can archive it. So if you want to put it back up again, you can echo it. So the thing is, and it's it's a little more difficult to yeah. respond to, whereas before, yeah. Go ahead. I I I. Content creators like you and I, we don't like complicated processes. We like to keep it as simple as possible. Oh, a lot of people were like, what the hell when this first came by? And it was alienating at first. But you have to decide. I, and I always say this. Look, yes, we create content for free for these people, which is what keeps it afloat. But at the end of the day, they are the owners of the app, and they could decide tomorrow to shut it down, and you have not a damn thing to say about it which is why I always say you have to have your own platform or you need to also drive people towards your own platform because if those go away, what, what do you have? So in, in addition to the stations, now instead of just being able to reply to somebody's audio, you they're called call-ins. So you can call into a station and leave a message. The nice thing about this is you have up to a minute. Now they've extended the time. You have five minutes to do whatever. Wow. Okay. You have one minute to respond. Okay. By calling in. Okay. But the person whose station you're calling into doesn't have to publish your call in. It could just you could tell them this is private, and you could do that, or you can publish the call in. So you know that's a good thing because it gives you that. But the thing is, it's problematic because there is a period of time where if you haven't recorded anything, it disappears after 24 hours. Your station is blank. So okay. how do I know I want to listen to you? Yeah, like the whole set of art. Yeah, that's, it's almost like an Instagram for voice. Well, well, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it keeps you on this consistent hamster wheel to keep creating content oh, wow. so that your station can be full. And I say to you, no sir, no ma'am, green eggs and ham. If I don't have anything on my station, it will just be blank. And when I get ready, I'll put it on. Right. So. No, nah, that's yeah. I'm not feeling that. I'm not. It's it's different. It's different. But, you know, to their credit, they're, they've been able to pull in some great uh, content creators as well. Of course, you still got WNYC that's on there. You've got some other people that they pull because they actually like. And I knew this was coming because when we saw somebody pointed out that they were looking for like some producers and stuff, I was like, a change is coming. Another way to know if change is coming is to look at the job boards for these companies. When they start advertising for things outside of what you're like, yeah, they're getting ready to pivot or they're getting ready to make a change. And I saw it coming. Are there any other relevant players in your opinion, in the live stream game, game that other than the ones we've talked about? You know, I think re relevant is relative. Okay. Because for the community of people that are using whatever platform, it's absolutely relevant to them. Now, are we talking relevant from a monetary standpoint? No, not necessarily. You still have the quote-unquote big guns, which is uh, Facebook Live, Periscope, I would throw YouTube in there too, although they're not, but YouTube, YouTube is bigger from a different static video pers perspective than for live streaming. But I think there, there'll be something to contend once they finally get it up and running. But from a content and community perspective, if you have a core group of users who find value in it, then it's absolutely valuable. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention one, Fire Talk. Fire talk. Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Fire talk. Yes, exactly. There's still people who do use file talk. Smile time. There's another one, but it's yep. so glitchy. Yep. So glitchy. Yep. Uh, nobody wants to pay for this. <laughs> That's part of the problem. When you start on a free model and then you tell people, uh, well, we're going to pay. I do not pay to live stream. The problem is you started the whole trajectory of live streaming was going live. Nobody was thinking about paying for this. So then you've got like a fire talk, which is great. The quality is great, but you have to pay for fire talk. 
and nobody wants to do that. Remember when Fire Talk was free? Yes. Then they would that tiered model. People well, jump ship as if there was a shark on board. Well, I, I think one of the difficulties too is they didn't give any alert that they were changing. They they just shut down. And they then, just shut down. And then for a period of time, they had a very limited free plan. But and they said we'd be offering you other plans in the near future. Why don't you, right. before you, should, first of all, tell people you're going to be shutting it down ahead of time, and then when you shut it down or before you shut it down, give the programs ahead of time so people know what to expect. Because when you just shut something down and then don't come back for a few months, how do you how do you retain those, pe those uh, content creators? You don't. You don't. And, and the thing is, when you do that and you all of a sudden now we want you to pay us and there's no plan for for whatever you lose that that's a mistake because you risk losing the people who may have been willing to stay around and pay because all right but if i pay who's going to watch everybody's gone right no that was that i didn't understand and this is one of the things that bothers me periodically is that a lot of these tech companies, they may, they're they good at tech when they're good at tech. But a lot of times when it comes to customer service, they're not great. <laughs> they're terrible. Tech people are not. We have to remember this. Tech people often are very linear. And they know tech, but they don't know social behavioral things, which is that. You know, and that's not something that is uh hit upon whether you went to school like traditional university for this or you just went to learn to code and you did this. It's not about the social relationships, which is which is so ironic since these are social apps that they have no social skills or abysmal social skills and their customer service is reflected in, in that. When you, let's take a look over a year ago to now, what do you feel is, has the live streaming game gotten better, stayed the same, or has stepped back? Oh, that's an excellent question. I guess you have to look at it in terms of what we're talking about here. If we're talking about technology, Honestly, it has not come very far from where it was. Uh, okay, at, th at this point, Periscope is now two years old. Uh, from where it was two years ago, they've come a little bit farther in terms of the features that they've been able to offer, like the multiple people on platform or whatever the case may be, depending on where you are. But it's really still very much the same. There's not been any earth shattering like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, you know, besides the, okay, Periscope gave you the ability to stream 360 video. Okay, that's great. What's really going to draw people in is not is is when you have a uh, capacity for VR and when the stories are good enough to be told in VR. Those are things to me that are paradigm shifters as opposed to game changers. Because I think we use the word game change too much. Just like how you like uh, the word outstanding as opposed to awesome. I like paradigm shift as opposed to game change. So nice. um, I, I think there there has not been very much innovation in the way of live streaming. They, I, I think it's coming, and I think it needs to come in order to retain people, and not only retain people, but to draw advertisers. I think advertisers are still very leery of the whole game because they don't see how the, the numbers, think about it, the, the number of people that actually live stream or watch live streams is abysmal compared to uh, watching content on other platforms, if that makes sense. True. It's a lot. So that's why when you have like, um, you might have 30 people in your stream, you're like, oh, I'm doing good today because that's big for the average person. Yeah. Then when you get to the point where you have 400, 500, you're talking big money. But when you look at the numbers that people get on other forms of media, it's not a lot. Right. So just to catch up with the conversation, Candy talking about Talkie IO is a platform I just like. Uh, there's also Zoom. Yes. I have not used it, but I've heard I heard a number of people that like it. It is a paid platform, so just heads up to that, people. Uh, Tish says no to Fire Talk, <laughs> and Candy says never Fire Talk. Uh, 
Tish says smile time is okay. Uh, and Trish, Tish is saying it, which it was low class what Blab did. I want to actually take a different turn in regards to this conversation about these uh, live streaming. Are do people realize that they need to have the bandwidth to do it? No. <laughs> you're you're asking great questions that have very simple answers. No, and, and this is why the average person gives their two dabs about the technology involved with it. They just want to press a button and go. I don't care how it works. I don't want to know how it works. I don't know about bandwidth. I don't know these numbers. I just want to press live and go. There are very few of us that, I shouldn't say very few, but there are a few of us that are actually paying attention to things like bandwidth, paying attention to things like uh, lighting and camera, the, the technical aspects of, of these things in order to make live streams good. Some people just want to get on and live. They don't care if they're in a semi-dark room. They don't <laughs> care if they don't have enough bandwidth and it keeps shutting off on them. So, But no, people, the average person does not realize everything that is involved in going live. And the, the nice thing is, again, when we say more bandwidth, that puts cha-ching in the pockets of the internet service providers. Seriously. Ser exactly. It, it really, really does. Unless you are lucky enough to have an unlimited plan. And even though after a certain amount of time, they will slow down your speed. Exactly. That's why I, I knew that I wanted to live stream. And so I knew I needed to be somewhere that had an unlimited plan. Thank goodness the carrier I'm with which I've been with since they were, I'm with T-Mobile. I've been with them since they were voice stream back, wow. back in the day. So when they first came, I like I said, I'm very loyal. If you're not messing up too much, better for me to stay with the devil I know than the angel I don't. So um, yeah, I, I think that that's why I stayed with them definitely because I have unlimited, uh, unlimited streaming. So yeah. I, I've been with the same carrier for a long time, and just recently this year, I went to an unlimited plan, and I also increased my speed. So, yes, the, very, very important. If if you're gonna be serious about this, do that. Make sure you have good speed and unlimited, because as you may or may not know, video takes up a lot of bandwidth, and if you it don't, does. if you don't have the right speed. Not only are you going to suffer, more importantly, your audience is going to suffer. Exactly. Exactly. Dr. Vibe, you hit it right on the head. At the end of the day, you're not live streaming for you. You're doing this for an audience. You ought to respect your audience enough to do your very best, to put your very best self out there. Otherwise, don't do it. That's just me. No problem. It, when you take a look at the the live streaming universe, do you feel, on average, we're just generalizing, do you see that the content being put out there, on average, is beginning to get better? Or and it, have we reached a point where the 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 serious people are still here, and the one the wannabes, so to speak, are sort of falling as falling aside? You know what? Yes. And and let me I, I we're seeing this happen. We're starting to see this turn in there's still rubbish. There's always going to be rubbish. Whenever you give somebody a microphone to speak, they will take it even if they have nothing to say or nothing you perceive that's of value for them to say. To them it's valuable. But I think we're starting to see a turn in in content because people realize that there's only the possibility of monetization. If you have good, solid content that people can get on board with and that advertisers feel okay getting on board with, if that's your goal. For some people, that's not your goal. So I think because of that, look at, and I have to put out, and of course I'm shouting out Mario Armstrong as we talked about before. Absolutely. Mario, Mario and I've said this to, to on the live stream, that his win is a win for all of us. Yes. Because the fact that he was able to get his dream, and he's been doing this for like, what, uh, talking about doing this for 10 years. The fact that he was able to get this and not only get this on a major Facebook Live site, which is Entrepreneur Magazine, he also was able to secure sponsors. 
He also was able to, he's also able to secure guests. He's got a house band. He's got, I mean, he's doing what it takes hundreds of thousands of dollars per episode for them to do on television. That is huge. And he's doing this, I shouldn't say for a fraction of the cost, but it is a fraction compared to what they do uh, on television. So I'm so proud of him. And because of that, that has really shifted the paradigm for everyone. I think it has shown people that this is possible, that this is not the side dish, that live streaming is not just the side dish to the main course, that it can be the main course. So I think because of that, not only are we continuing to see people up their game, and this and the invention, the uh, the proliferation of new tools like the OBSs, like these encoders that allow you to put uh, multiple people on to bring in video and text and uh, and pictures, lower thirds, all those types of things. So we're going to see it just get better. But I will say this, less is more people. As a filmmaker, uh, less is more. One thing as a filmmaker, when people are beginning sometimes, they want to have every fancy effect they can and slide in and this and then dissolve and everything turns into weight. No. Cuts and maybe an occasional dissolve are the way that, that professionals do things. So this is what you want to think about. You are not CNN. And no disrespect when you're doing that, but you don't necessarily need to have all of that to have your message heard because we came to hear you. Content. We came to hear you. The content is key. Yeah. Like 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 I share with people if I, if it's a lady I'm speaking to I say content is queen, if it's a guy I say content is king. Exactly. Exactly. You know, it's it's very very important and I, and I think it's interesting cuz we're talking I was just asking you about your thoughts on, you know, we're seeing the weeding out. I'm noticing in my periscope timeline i'm not seeing people as many people create content as there used to be yeah yes it's thinning out you're right whereas there used to be a whole list of people it's not necessarily the cream is rising to the top but the people that have the tenacity and understand what live streaming is that are so what the people that went first were the people that were only interested in getting their product out there, marketing and and making a whole bunch of money. That's not the way it works in this space. Right. Okay. It's a slow build, a very slow build. And you're not and you may not make money specifically off of that live stream. It's probably going to be with ancillary ancillary products or projects or you know tandem works with your live stream. Initially at least. So it's probably going to be you've got a book and you're using your live stream uh, to promote it. It's probably going to be I have a seminar and I'm going to do this, but this will also help in terms of getting people for the seminar because they know me from these small bits here. It could be a product. All right, I'm doing this, but I also have this product that I'm doing. That's probably initially how the and if you make money, the bulk of your money is going to be made because advertising has not caught up caught up on live stream yet. Yeah, and they're still they're not there yet, for whatever reason. I guess maybe numbers, but again, right. we we refer, both of us refer back to what Mary Armstrong's doing on his Facebook Live show. That's a game changer. Oh my goodness, it it's. It's so wonderful to see because it means that all of us that are doing these things, you and me included, we're not doing this in vain. That I, I mean, we never thought that we were doing it in vain anyway. We were doing it because of the love of what, of what it is, but it, you know, it would be nice to also monetize it. And it shows that it's possible. But you have to be in it. To, I mean, I hate the term, but you have to be in it to win it. You have to be in there for the long haul, for the people. I think... Because this is so instant, I call them all of this instant media. Because it's so instant, people think they can also instantly make money. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen overnight in linear television, nor will it here, especially not here. Especially here. Absolutely, especially not here. It's a whole different ballgame, and you've got to be persistent and consistent. Exactly, exactly. You know, that's, wow. that is so important that you've got to be persistent because... And I am a, I was originally a podcaster, 
So right. for, me, for me to flip into the live streaming game, I had my doubts, but I'm glad I jumped into it. Let me ask Tachi, do you think is now the best time for people to get into live streaming in your opinion? This is the best time for any type of content creation, whether it's live streaming, whether it's podcasting, whether it's you becoming an independent filmmaker, because the cost of entry is so low at this point. You don't have to have huge, big, fancy equipment, a huge expensive connection to get your message out there. This is the best time in the history of media for anyone to be a content creator. And I encourage it because we still need a diversity of voices. We had been relying on Hollywood and the commercial media industry to tell us what was what. Now we don't have to beg anybody for anything. And I'm a big believer in not begging people for that. I can't stand it. So rather than beg you, I won't do it. Now I don't have to beg anybody for the chance to be heard, to put the things out there that I think are important, that I think other people believe to be important as well. This is the best time in the history, and my friend Joe Wilson says this as well, unequivocally the best time to be a media content creator. Well, you know, and here's the power of live streaming, because let alone in this live stream, we have Tish that I believe is from the United States, we have Candy that's from Japan, and we have the wonderful David Hughes from Australia. Yay! Wow! Wait a minute. Oh, well, it's morning in Australia yes. now. So. And, that, okay. and, it's a, and he said, I'm still learning about podcasting and live streaming, so this season is really exciting for me. David, if you want any help with it, please give me a shout. And especially when it comes to live streaming, myself and Tachi are here to help you. Tachi has so much experience, especially in the the video contenting, we will be more than happy to help you because you go back to the Blab days. So definitely, I remember you from Blab and you've been a consistent supporter. So thank you so much for us stopping by. And this is a perfect example. I don't think too many platforms like this could get you international coverage and con get it, get people on from all over the world easily. But I will, no I will piggyback on what Tashi said. It's easier than ever to get in it still takes work. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of, and, and I would venture to say more work than linear forms of media because linear forms of media already have a distribution model set up. Yes. This is a little more difficult to build your audience. It's a slow build it, and the distribution is just this. So we're relying on the people that are using social media, the people that are on these platforms to see it. That's, that's who your, that's who your audience is. So it's, it's exceedingly difficult, but I still think it's the best time to get in. And it, if you want to get your feet wet, and this is what I always tell my students, I don't give them any excuse not to have you, you ought to have a portfolio this thick by the time you graduate from college, ready to give to an employer, this is what I've done. I've been hosting my own show ever since freshman year on this platform or that platform. I've been doing Snapchat snaps and I've done a series on Snapchat or Instagram uh, on uh, Instagram stories since XYZ. If you're not doing this, I can't help you and I wash my hands of you. Don't tell anybody I taught you ever because I'm telling you now what you need to do to get your leg up. Those people that have the information and those people who take the time to do it right are the ones who are going to have the opportunities in the future. And you know what? We didn't you, we didn't get you a chance to speak about Snapchat and Instagram stories. Do you have any comments on either of those platforms? Yes, Instagram stories is a copy of Snapchat. <laughs> That point blank, I told you, Facebook takes no prisoners. They're just, oh, we're going to do this, and we're going to call it stories, just like you. Say something. They're like, now, yeah, say something, basically. They're taunting them. Uh, I think they're both excellent storytelling tools. The I'm absolutely in love with Snapchat. I was one who was very uh, suspicious and skeptical about Snapchat at first because I'm like, what do I mean with that? It's a whole bunch of uh, millennials and Gen, Gen Z that are showing, you know, private parts to each other. I don't want that. But then it shifted. And then older users started to use it. 
uh, millennials that were on the cusp, like, okay, I'm Gen X, but I'm on the cusp of being a millennial because I'm at the uh, higher end of Gen X. So the lower end of the millennials, we meet up. So then we had people that were my contemporaries that were starting to use it. And then older people latched onto it. And they're really telling some amazing stories in 10 second snaps. So I, I think it's a great way to, if, if even if you don't want to live stream, I think this is a good way to get your feet wet in practice for live streaming and or tell complete stories on, on Snapchat or Instagram stories. Candy brings up a very good point. She feels that there are too many live streaming platforms. Do you feel that? I, I do. I do. But that's what the free and open market is. That's the, the nature of the system that we've built, that the, the whole this marketplace of ideas where anybody can develop anything and the market decides what is worth it and what is not. So at the end of the day, whatever the market does not determine to be worthy will fall by the wayside. Is that fair? No, not necessarily. You worked hard. You want this to thrive and do well. But at the end of the day, it is an open economy. The market will decide what survives and what does not survive. But there are a lot. I agree. So let me ask, and I don't know, it may be putting you a little bit on the spot. If, you, if you're a content creator, if someone uh -huh. came to you and said, Tachi, I want to do live streaming. I'm a content creator. What platforms would you suggest for it? that person it really depends on what they want to live stream about right who their audience is it's a, see all of this goes back to old-fashioned principles of presentation making i also teach public speaking so when i talk about public speaking with my students i'm like all right the first thing you need to do um, is once you've gotten all your content together of what you're going to speak about and you've done that, you need to know who your audience is and, wh and where you're going to be speaking because that determines how you deliver that content and how, you know, the, the level to which that content is delivered. So if you want to, if you're talking about a topic that is really relevant to millennials and Gen Z, maybe Facebook Live is not the best place to do it, <laughs> especially if you're not a millennial or Gen Z, it, because you're not getting that really young audience. Younger people tend to skew more towards Instagram. They'll use Snapchat. They'll use, they're not really Twitter or Facebook Live users. So you're going to find older people there. So my suggestion is... Number one, dis uh, discover what it is that you want to talk about and who your audience is for that. Sit down and plan that out. And then look at the platforms and see, all right, well, this has a large Gen X population. This has a lot of boomers on there. This has a lot of everybody. There are some that, you know, maybe everybody is using it. And that's fine. You will find your audience. But I'm saying this uh, with, in the back of my mind, don't give up on a platform simply because you don't think it's for you. It may not be for you now. Just like Snapchat was not for me initially, after a while, it became something that I use and really love. You're making me think about trying to get back into the Periscope world again. So do it. Ah, do it. It just, But see, the thing is, it's just so many different platforms. Now you, you're blessed because you have a producer. And the, the key, like the nice thing is... You see, and I'm glad you said what you did because David is a distinguished Toastmaster. So I'm glad you mentioned about public speaking. Nothing oh. just happens. So David, I hope that you heard what Tachi just shared and you may want to touch base with her because there's certainly, yes. if you want to get to that right audience with what you're doing, she'd be a great resource to reach out to. But getting back, yeah, the Periscope thing, I did it for a while and the trolls didn't the audience and then i said i have a message and again you need the help to do this i want to get it out on multiple platforms at once i don't want to and i i tip my hat off to you on this how you record basically the same content on different platforms it's a lot of work oh yeah it is a lot of work it's a lot of work, but I've been able to, you know, thank goodness I've always been simulcasting, so I'm able to deliver it, you know, at once. 
right. uh, on Periscope and Facebook Live. So that's helpful. And I just do wh what I've done is so I do busker before, but I only do half an hour on busker. Right. But, and before I was doing like a full hour of everything. And I'm like, well, you know, if I continue to do that, I will burn myself out. So I give them half an hour and then an hour there and I, I'm good. Well, Tish is saying to me, yes, go back to trying good old Periscope. So we'll see. All right. And David says, I did, and I will get in touch with Tachi. There you go. Good oh, stuff. Good, and Candy says, I use Periscope for sharing cultural stuff, tech, or even fashion. So there you go. There you go. No, I, Periscope, it just does doing the stuff like Facebook Live is just so much more user friendly for me and I just get better views and better reach with Facebook live but I sh I guess I should not leave uh, periscope out of the out of the out of the ring no no I, I I would say if if there are people to be reached there to go ahead and do that and then you know here's the thing I always tell people that it's great to be able to repurpose your content you know you always hear the thing of all right well Say, make sure you're saving your content, saving your live stream, your videos, so that you can repurpose it on YouTube or other things. Something that you have to remember is not everything that you do is appropriate for every platform. So I think it's, it's worth it to sit down and decide, does this work where I'm going to put it? So it may be, Dr. Vibe, that you just have to think about, if I want to use Periscope, what is it that I can do to engage over there? What do I need to do differently from what I'm doing on my other platforms to pull Periscope in? Because sometimes it doesn't work to do the same thing everywhere. So that's just something to think about. Good point. Thank you, Coach Tachi. <laughs> <laughs> You're the coach. I just have little nuggets of information. Uh, you have evaluated experience, which is good. You know what, though? I think we should start fading it out because you've probably had a long day. And I know that you've got things to do. By the way, slamming earrings on you. Thank you. Thank you so much. These were actually a gift. So So wh whoever picked them out, excellent taste. Yeah, I everybody was like trying to covet these earrings. It was actually I uh, my sorority. It was our sisterhood month in March. Yes. And so if you if you hold these upside down, it's actually a delta. Uh, so that's yes, one yes. machine, yeah. So um, these well, are my, my Delta earrings. Well, look who has just jumped into the conversation, Mr. Curtis Brooks. Hey, Curtis Brooks, how are you? Good to see you. Yes. I just had, okay, listen. And Tish wants you to give your handle on Periscope so you can follow her. Oh, absolutely. I am at Tachiata, T A C H I A D A. On uh, most type social media, I use Tatiana. Probably oh, best yeah. to just type it in. Yes. I'll do what that. is up, Curtis Brooks? Big shout out to you and thank you for providing uh, the help that you've made Tachi's conversations. The bar is raised. Well done. So before Absolutely. we let it, everyone go, do you have any final words to share with our audience, Tachi, when it comes to the state of live streaming? Ooh, the state of live streaming. I think that we are we are stagnant, but I know it's going to very quickly move along and move along in a direction that we may not want it to go if we don't actually take it by the reins. So what's happening now is you've got a lot of traditional broadcasters that are on uh, these live streaming platforms and they're turning it just into... CNN too, if that makes any sense. You can't do the same thing on linear television that you would do here. This is all about being interactive. And so I think that it, it to me is looking like they're trying to go in the direction of traditional because that's what people are used to and that's what people know. But those of us that are actually in the space and actually live streamers, we need to say, no, this is how it's done and be the example for these people, even though they think they know broadcasting, they don't know live stream. So we need to be the example. Well put. And I'll just piggyback onto that for someone who's been, well, a live audio stream content provider for a while and a live stream webcam video 
content provider for a while. When you're doing this, it, you have so much more freedom. So use the opportunity. Use the bandwidth, but use the people with. And as Tachi said, the engagement part is so makes it will make the difference. Your yes. your technical end and and if you are having challenges with it, ask. Because the last thing you want for a long period of time is your quality, especially your broadcast quality, not to be great. Right. You'll you'll, lo you'll lose you'll lose your audience. And I agree, Curtis. Bring personality important. And it's just so important that, you know, I knew Tachi and I had conversations from way back that saying, Oh, I want to include my quality, You've got to bring it up, brought to bring it up. She's brought it up and I'm sure she's noticed the improvement from her audience and the interaction. So if if you ha it just depends how serious you are. If you're serious, you'll make the investment to improve the quality, not so much for you, but for your audience. Absolutely. And can I just shout out Curtis? Absolutely. absolutely. Curtis, Curtis is actually my producer. Yeah. So so he's the one that's uh, responsible for for bringing up the, the level of the production. You know, I already had uh, the lighting and the sound and all of that. It was just more so I really needed it to be, he put the finishing touches on it. And so it's a process. So well, thank you. Yeah, and, and, and just to add to that value that Curtis provides, take a look at some of Tachi's periscopes six months ago and take a look at them now. Absolutely, absolutely. There's or a, even you could go back to that first one in July, exactly. July 29th, 19, not 19, 2015. That one where I just had like no lights, I had just whatever available light. And it was grainy, but it was great. The content, it was great for me. The content was great. But now it's about upping the game because I have a following and I really feel like I want to do my best for them. Exactly. And, and that's the thing. Yes, we're we're at a certain level, but it took time. So don't be afraid. We were where a number of people were who just who are just starting out. We were there. The advantage that with people who are starting now, the starting point is such such a higher bar. You can get in easier. When right. we started live streaming, there wasn't a Facebook Live. There was the Google Hangouts was not a place to hang out. It was a place you got hung, more like than being exactly. hanged, <laughs> for being hanged out. So the bar is low to get in. And just, as I say to people, just work on getting a little bit better each broadcast. That's Absolutely. what I say. So Tachi, before we let you go, can you provide your content in contact information? Sorry. Yeah, so I put in the chat before my computer shut down, <laughs> at Tachiata, because I forgot to plug it up, at Tachiata uh, on Twitter, on Periscope, on uh, Busker, also uh, Anchor, I'm either Tachi or Tachiata, so you'll either find Tachi or Tachiata as my across the board. Um, Facebook, I use my whole name, Chitachi A. Egwu, but I have a page, which is Mediascope, so I actually broadcast from the Mediascope page on Facebook Live. All right. That is fantastic. And for those who don't know our information, just look it up. Like I say to people, we're Googleicious. We're Googleicious. So that's that's the key. Myself, uh really the best place really i make it easy just go to my website really just go to my website and all the contact information is there you can watch a lot of all my conversations you can hear a lot of them they're also on different platforms such as the good men project itunes uh iheart radio tuned in radio uh g stitcher itunes all over the place but just go to the website i like to make it easy for everybody so thanks everyone who was watching either live on the replay big shout out to candy from japan to tish to david from australia to curtis brooks thank you so much for taking the time to watch this if you're watching it live if you're watching on the replay much appreciated as always i like to say you're blessed and highly favored you're a magnet for miracles and your solution for someone's problem coming up tomorrow afternoon on the dr vibe show i've got jim kennedy from texas who's going to talk about finding your purpose. Now, Jim had 25 years of experience in the corporate world, also in Army military, and he's a leadership guy, and he learned his best lessons of leadership from being a parent. 
And then tomorrow night, back on YouTube Live, I have Tiffany Rochelle from uh, Lab Days, who's going to be talking. This is going to be two interesting topics coming up. Tomorrow night at 9 p.m. on YouTube Live, are, are some black women mimicking black gay men? 9 p.m. Oh, 9 p.m. tomorrow evening. And then... With, I see Tachi's face. I got even a, a hotter topic on Thursday night, 9 p.m. I have Zaza Ali and Dr. Tommy Curry having a discussion. Are, are black women leaving black men behind? That's also on the YouTube channel. So Tachi's going, what is Dr. Vibe up to? He's going to... But the, again, that's one of the reasons why you do live streaming. It gives you the space and opportunity to have these conversations. Because you won't see them on traditional television traditional media won't go there so no there you go you're blessed and highly favored you're a magnet for miracles and you're a solution for someone's problem and remember sometimes you have to get smaller to get stronger look forward to seeing everyone in the next few days on the dr vibe show and i'll say too early if you do celebrate it have a great easter this weekend god bless peace be well and keep the faith